Okay. So, could you tell us the name that you were born with? My name is Moshe Taube. I was born with this name and uh, continue with the name up to today. And when were you born? Oh, yeah. <laughs> June 17, 1927. So now you know how old I am. <laughs> uh -huh. And where were you born? I was born in Krakow, Poland. Krakow. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make you tell us, how old does that make you right now? You figure it out. Okay. <laughs> and can you tell us your religious identity? Always Jewish. Proudly so. And do you have any siblings? I had. My sister was killed by the Germans in 1942. Now I just want you to tell us however much you want to tell us and however little you want to tell us about your personal Holocaust experience. Survivorship. Yep. Well, I divide my survivorship into four phases. Phase one, when I was a bar mitzvah boy, this is when I lost my home and started wandering around. I had, we had to leave Krakow because the Germans have decreed that no Jews should be living in Krakow. So we somehow took a little bit, uh, uh, took a, a small room in the suburbs of Krakow mm -hmm. where we were until my second phase, which was the ghetto, we went from there, from the little village, suburb of Krakow, right into the ghetto, together with my my mother, my family, and my father joined us, joined, joined us later. But it was a, a, a transition of great import, a transition, a tragic transition, because the Germans wanted us in the ghetto so they should be able to put their hands on us without having to look for us somewhere in the suburbs. The ghetto experience was a traumatic one. I had to work very, very, very hard for the Germans without any pay, of course. They, they came into the ghetto and took us out to work for them, the Germans. And of course, we, we were living, our entire family, in one very small room very small, half of this one. And it was a very, very difficult, difficult living in such a small space with my mother, my sister and my father. It was un unspeakably difficult and uncomfortable, of course. But we had we had to live with it, we had to get used to it, and we made the best of it. Of it. Because uh, there was no other possibility. This was my second phase of my survivorships. The third one was my mother and my sister were taken, 
taken away in 1942, October 1942, to be killed by the Germans in uh, Belzets. This is the extermination camp in Belzets. Belzets. My third f phase started, when from the ghetto we were transported into the concentration camp next to Krakow, which was the Plashov concentration camp. It figures very prominently in the movie Schindler's List. The Plashov concentration camp was a disaster for us because we were not sure what the, what the day of tomorrow will bring. It could, it could have very easily brought our demise or our being shot by any German there. The SS guards in Plasso had the right, so to speak, to shoot any Jew that they wanted to, without any without any questions asked. But the most, the greatest murderer in Plashov was of course the one who figures very prominently in the Schindler's List movie, it was Amon Goethe. He, for him, killing a Jew was fun. He was sitting on his balcony with a rifle and he was sh shooting the inmates, any inmates that he wanted to, without any reason or rhyme and reason or in anything. This was good. In Klashov I was about a year and a half and then my fourth phase started by being included in Schindler's List miraculously and transported in October 1944 to Brünnlitz, the concentration camp Brünnlitz, which was also a work, a work commando. by Schindler. We were working there together with my father in tremendous, tremendous suffering, suffering starvation, deprivation, and personal, personal body boils, was a, a, a <coughs> was the result of malnutrition, with tremendous suffering. <coughs> but thank God we survived and we were liberated by the Russian army who came into the camp in 1945. <coughs> and this was the end, I would say, of the saga of my survivorship and May 1945, when the Russians came in and we went together with my father to Poland, to Krakow, to look for survivors of my family. There was not one who survived from the, from the family of my mother, of course. My father, my father's family was in Przemysl, which is 
near Lemberg, near Lwów, also nobody survived. Only one of his brothers survived because he was in Romania. But we lost our entire family. There were 65 immediate families, aunts, uncles, uh, cousins, immediate family, 65 people on my mother's side, same on my father's side. Uh, I understand you are interested only in my ye in the years of my survivorship and not what happened later. Well, I'll ask you questions about that, actually. If yes. So, after you guys went back to Poland, how long did you then stay in Poland? About 10 days. Okay. Because we looked for some survivors we didn't find, and we went to join my father's brother, mm -hmm. who was in Romania, he escaped. We went to Romania to join him and to be with him for about a year. Okay. So where did you guys go after that? Did you come to the U.S. or did you go oh, no. to Israel? I went to Israel as a illegal immigrant and we were caught and interned by the British. We were caught on, on high seas and towed by the British to Haifa and interned in Atlit, which was the internment camp for illegal immigrants. Was your dad with you? <clears throat> but nobody was with me. Just you? My, my father went back to Poland. Mm -hmm tried to save some some of the real estate that we had in Poland. So what how did you get out of being interned by the British? Well, the time came, the quota it was applied to us by the British in in September 1945, the quarter of September, and we were, I was uh, liberated from that camp, from the internment, internment camp, and, and I went to Jerusalem to be for a little while with some family, distant family. And how long did you stay in Israel? Eleven years. Wow. What did you do while you were there? Well, while I was there, I worked as a clerk in a uh, government office, but I discovered that I was more interested in music, in cantorial music, and being a cantor. So I was a cantor more than a clerk in, a, in an office. As a matter of fact, when I was in the office, everybody knew that I was singing. So why did you decide to leave Israel and come here? Yes, I came, uh, I left Israel because for two reasons. I wanted a higher musical education and therefore I enrolled at Juilliard School of Music in New York and I wanted to better my uh, economic situation because in Israel the cantors were underpaid very, very badly. So I wanted to make my living by being a cantor and singing. So I went to New York 
and I got a very big position in New York. And what was that job? The congregation was called Share Zedek. Share S H A A R E Share Zedek Z E D C K. Z E D E C K. It was a very famous congregation. Very prominent cantors were employed by that congregation, and I was I had the great honor to follow many famous cantors in that congregation. I was there for eight years, but uh, the situation in New York uh, was very bad because you, you cannot, you couldn't go out in the streets, and, and, and uh, it was it was dangerous. The streets on the west side were danger, dangerous. So I took the uh, opportunity of an offer in Pittsburgh. 1965, and I came to 60, in 65 to Congregation Beth Shalom, mm -hmm. and I was there for forever, <laughs> more than 40 years. But I developed my talent, I developed my knowledge, I developed my musical background. And my uh, talent to compose, not only to sing, but also to compose services. And I had a big choir, and uh, every service at the Shalom was called a concert service. So, how did you meet your spouse? <laughs> My spouse of 33 years, I met in Pittsburgh. She was extremely interested and fond of music, of singing, especially by singing. <laughs> And I was interested in her very much, in her personality, in her goodness, in her care. And thank God, I uh, thank God every day for her. And what year were you guys married? 1983. <laughs> and how many children do you have? Well, I have children from my first marriage. Okay. Two daughters. How many grandchildren? How many grandchildren? Eighteen. Eighteen. A one eight. One eight. <laughs> yeah. Now you, you you should ask me how many great grandchildren. Uh, that was coming next. How many great grandchildren? <coughs> Twelve. Twelve. Wow. I was going to say a platoon. Yes, that is a small platoon. <laughs> yes. Wow. That's that's a lot. You're some brave women. Um. So what would you say one of your favorite things to do now? What do you like doing during the day? My favorite thing is to be with my wife. Mm -hmm. This is number one. Number two, I like to listen to music, to classical music, evaluate it and understand it, following it with, with a uh, uh, score in my hands. Mm -hmm. One more question. Yeah. Would you say that your experiences during the war held you back or did they motivate you? 
in your life? Well, it's not a matter of motivating, it's a matter of experiencing the past today by not only thinking about it, but by dreaming about it and by having nightmares about it. My wife helps me very much to overcome the tremendous uh, uh, hurt that I have following the experiences. And she, she's very, very helpful in alleviating my suffering from, from it. That's great. Those are all my questions. By the way, he's not just the cantor, he's the cantor's cantor, the top of the line. And I'm not just saying it because I'm married to him. He really <laughs> is. Uh -huh. so he really, really is. So you should hear see, him you sing. See, you oh. see now why I'm living. Oh. You should hear I've heard him sing, sing several times at Yom Hashoah. Really? Yeah, because I'm always at Yom Hashoah, just oh, not... Oh, yes. Yom yeah. Hashoah. Uh -huh. Yes, I always sing there. Yeah, yes. but that's uh, the high holidays you should hear. Oh, oh yeah. and Yom Kippur. Yom Hashoah, it's, yeah. it's really not uh -huh. singing. It's, it's, a, that is it's a chanting, uh, yeah. sadly. Yeah. He goes into the high ranges like an F-16, like this, <laughs> not this way, up, 90 degree angle, yeah. oh, that's what he does, whoa. Mm -hmm. Very great, thank you. Yes, dear. Yes, any thank other you. questions? I don't have any other questions. If I do have any other questions, I'll probably just give you a call if I need to mm -hmm. fill something in. But I, think I, I gave you in a capsule everything. Yeah. I didn't elaborate on anything. It was good. I think it'll it'll be perfect because the thing for the bios, you've seen the. Did you come to the opening of the Holocaust Center? 